Hi, my name is Abby Spangler and uh, I'm an undergraduate student at Florida State University. Right now I'm doing an internship at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Dr. Rachel Collins' lab. Um, I'm doing a project that, in, that investigates the egg-laying behavior of a species of intertidal snail called Neurodisca Costa. And right now we are at my field site in Punta Culebra. We're on the Pacific coast of Panama, right at the mouth of the canal, which you can see behind me. Uh, my project is about measuring the physiological and physical stress experienced by the developing stages of a species of intertidal snail. Um, the development of stages of many organisms are thought to be very sensitive to environmental conditions. And in this case, um, the intertidal snails are putting their eggs in very stressful conditions and so we're trying to see exactly how stressful those conditions are and how that's maybe affecting the development um, and the abundance and distribution of the species. Um, right here we have the species of snail that I'm working with. This is Nerida scabricosta and they're a high intertidal species and they lay their eggs in the tide pools. As you can see right here, all of these white little dots are egg capsules. So the capsules are very durable, and they're basically a cap that goes over the rock substrate, and the embryos are underneath it. And after the embryos are done developing, the cap will pop off, and the planktonic larvae, larvae will be released and swept out by the tide to develop in the plankton, and then they'll recruit back to this part of the inner tidal to become adults. So the new capsules tend to be fairly white, and then, um, like these ones right here, and as they get older and older, um, they tend to get a more yellowy co color, and then eventually the capsule will pop off and will leave a little scar, um, it's like an open circle on the substrate. Um, right now we're in the intertidal zone, and this is a very uh, stressful habitat because sometimes it's covered by the ocean and other times it's not. And so when it's covered by the ocean, um, the temperature will be fairly constant, salinity will be fairly, fairly constant, but when the tide goes out, um, this area is exposed to the elements um, of the sun, the rain. Right now we're in the tropics, so um, we're, we would assume that the uh, frequent rainfall would have an effect on the environmental conditions here. Um, additionally, there's two seasons. There's a dry season and a wet season. In the wet season, it'll rain nearly every day, but in the dry season, um, you'll go for months without rain. And so we're thinking that will have um, an effect on the conditions out here and the conditions the organisms are experiencing. But um, we have to do some tests to know for sure. Okay, so right here we have some of my snails um, down in this crevice. They're all clumped together, forming an aggregation. They do this during uh, the daytime low tides because they're trying to stay cool. And by getting in these crevices and clumping together, they can conserve water and it um, keeps their temperature pretty, pretty constant. So. Unlike the mobile adults, the developing embryos can't run away from stressful conditions. They're in the pools, they're fixed there, they have to develop there, and so they're basically subject to whatever environmental and physical stresses come their way. Uh, my snail species seems to prefer to put their eggs in very small tide pools, which is interesting because the conditions would seem to be less stable there, because a certain amount of rainfall would change the conditions of the pool more rapidly than it would change the conditions of a, a bigger pool. And same with uh, salinity changes due to evaporation. This is my second site. The terrain here is a little um, more treacherous than the other side. It was a lot flatter over there. But the snails are still living here. Um, they're still tide pools, so they still have places to lay their eggs. Like you can see over here, we have a pretty cool tide pool. Um, like we've seen before, some of the pools are absolutely full of eggs. There's no bare sub substrate left. But as you can see here, some of the pools have absolutely zero eggs. And so we're trying to uncover a little bit why they choose the pools they do. Is there something physically different about the pools? Um, like 
do they experience less stressful conditions and so we're running some tests. One thing we're trying to measure in these tide pools is um, temperature because uh, it can be a measure of physiological stress and so I'm using these devices called eye buttons which are basically just temperature sensors and I fix them in the pools wrapped in plastic and with some marine epoxy and I leave them there for about a month so we can record um, temperature fluctuations and what kind of conditions the capsules are actually experiencing. Right now we're pretty far up in the inner tidal. Um, we're so far up that some of the pools don't get covered by every um, tidal cycle because the amplitude of the tidal change and right here we have one of the pools that hasn't been covered in probably a couple days. As you can see, the, the water looks pretty fouled, but they still have some eggs in there, which um, leads me to believe that the capsules are pretty resistant to the external conditions.